What's up, New Orleans? This is Comedy Central Stand Up Presents. Please welcome the comedians of Comedy Central Stand Up Presents. Hey, hey! Hey, what's up, New Orleans? Hi! Oh, this is tight. What up? I'm so excited to be. I love New Orleans, man. I really do. <laughs> I just been drinking hand grenades and shitting neon. It's tight. <laughs> My shit coming out spooky. I love this place. This is great, man. Thank you for being here. I've been traveling a lot. I've been like on the road quite a bit. I, I spent a month this year in Canada. I was like living in Canada. Yeah, it's just better. <laughs> the, it's better than America, y'all. Like you don't have to be here. No, it's it's better. I like Canada. They're doing some progressive shit in Canada. I saw a white woman washing windows. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you understand how exciting that was for me? Just walking past like, oh shit, y'all do that? I didn't know you had those muscles. <laughs> it blew my mind. A part of me wanted to run up to her and be like, hey, white girl, yous can be free. <laughs> you can be free, white girl. You ain't got to live like this no more. In America, there are vintage furniture stores as far as the eye can see. You can bring your dog inside of restaurants. Just ruin people's meal with pet dander and privilege. <laughs> listen, white girl, listen to me, listen to me. Free yourself, free yourself. Find the North Star and then walk backwards <laughs> to freedom. Get on that above ground railroad. It's just a regular train. It's a reasonably priced train. Uh, I'm learning what kind of favors I won't do for friends anymore. Like I had to go see a friend in a play recently. Ooh. Maybe you guys can help me out with this. Why is live theater still happening? Do we know? Does anyone know? We've given it a shot. We could probably wrap it up on plays, right? We could call it a day. I think we did it. <laughs> there were probably Greek guys at the back of the amphitheater 2,000 years ago just like, oh, I'm just here to support Tiresias. This is brutal. <laughs> Ugh. Bring out the God machine. Ba -ba -ba. Let's go, sundial. Let's go. <laughs> there is something that I love about theater, which is there's a sound that people in the audience of a play make to let the people around them know that they get the play. And it sounds like, oh. If you go to a play, you'll hear it like people eating popcorn. Oh, oh, oh. Throughout. <laughs> like I went and saw the play Doubt and the very final scene, the one nun turns to the other nun and says, I have such doubt. <laughs> and the woman sitting next to me went, oh. <laughs> and I know she meant that noise as like, oh, all the dramatic themes swirling together into one denouement. <laughs> but I chose to interpret her noise as, Oh, that's the title of this play. <laughs> mm. 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 Good. <laughs> I thought I was at the wrong play. <laughs> I used to live in New York. Has anyone here ever lived in New York? Yeah. Yeah, what a piece of shit place. <laughs> People were like, best city on earth. I'm like, yeah, to see a stranger's dick, maybe. Like, and specifically to see a stranger's dick you didn't want to see because... Sometimes you'll see a stranger's dick and be like, ooh. <laughs> I kind of spiced up my commute. Uh, I remember the first stranger's dick I didn't want to see. Yeah, that's a children's book I'm working on. Huh? <laughs> Teaches kids about colors and shapes. It's like, wow, okay. <laughs> It's called Me Too. Um, 
my first apartment in New York, I actually ended up having to move out of because we caught our super climbing on a ladder through our bedroom window to try and have sex with us. <laughs> what a New York moment! <laughs> wow, am I a Carrie or a Samantha? <laughs> The weirdest part about the whole situation, he had Keats. <laughs> it's like, listen, I don't want to tell anybody how to rape, but if the front door is an option, why this Romeo and Juliet bullshit? <laughs> Luckily, I was not in the apartment when this super sexy time happened because I was at the Giants Monday night football game. Okay. I feel like that's a very important thing to point out because it's actually the first time the NFL has saved a woman from being assaulted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Did that hurt your dicks a little bit? <laughs> Weak pieces of shit. <laughs> this is a fun game. Ladies, if you were sitting next to a man and he didn't like that joke, don't fuck him! <laughs> that's a bad man. That's a man that's gonna go on HGTV and be like, I don't want a nursery, I want a man cave. And you're like, run, bitch! Like, <laughs> oh, you gotta be evil to live in New York right now. It, that's how much money it costs. You gotta be evil. That's the only fucking way to live in New York City. It's so bad, nobody will even admit what they do for a living because they all pay eight grand a month for a loft, so whatever they do is fucking evil. <laughs> but none of you, if you ask somebody what they do for a living, you get the same response. You're like, what do you do for a living? Oh, he's a guy in a suit. He's like, ha, 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 ha
Have you heard people talk like this? <laughs> Ugh, it kills me. Every time I hear someone talking like that, I want to respond with like, oh my God, if they're so happy, if they're so happy, why do they escape? <laughs> why do they risk their lives and swim 90 miles through treacherous waters just to get to Florida? <laughs> A state so sad it's shaped like half a frown. You know who never travels to Cuba? Cubans that left Cuba. <laughs> My parents left over 40 years ago. They've never gone back. When I lived in San Francisco, they wouldn't even visit Alcatraz. <laughs> My dad was like, a prison island surrounded by sharks? I don't think so, man. <laughs> I don't think so, motherfucker. Eh, 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 eh. Never again, man. Never again. <laughs> they have a saying in Tennessee, you know? Fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me, you can't fool me again, you know what I mean? <laughs> President George W. Bush said that. <laughs> a president that just suddenly got promoted to second worst president of all time. Oh man, I used to go out and see people and do stuff at night, and now some nights I just stay in and read Amazon reviews <laughs> of things I already own. I think I'm just looking for a sense of community, you know? I'm like, I wonder who else out there is mad about my blender. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, Rick F. from Iowa is right. The puree setting really is more of a fine chop. <laughs> I think Amazon just knows me too well now. Like, my recommendations have become such a bummer. Every time I go on now, it's like, because you enjoyed the book, Fatherless Women, and I'm like, oh, Amazon, don't even finish that sentence. <laughs> And by the way, I wouldn't say I enjoyed fatherless women. No, sometimes I, I try to throw it off my scent a little bit by clicking on cool stuff, you know, trying to make it think I have a cool life. Put in an hour or two clicking on like snowboards and big boxes of big condoms. <laughs> I just want Amazon to think I'm busy hitting the slopes in my magnums, you know? That's right, Amazon, mama got a big old dick. <laughs> I just hope next time I go on, I just want it to be like, because you bought a thousand extra large condoms, we thought you might like to hang out sometime. <laughs> hey, come grab a brewski with your old boy Amazon. <laughs> so, you know, the other night Amazon and I were DP in this chick and, uh, no, <laughs> I'm kid, I was reading Fatherless Women, I told you. <laughs> My first time living alone, too. That's, that's like exciting stuff, living alone, you know? I gotta, I gotta like pay rent all by myself, you know? It's like, wow, who am I? My dad, you know? <laughs> Paying rent. You know how much my rent is for this tiny little apartment? It's, it's exactly $1,000. That's my rent. Thank you. <laughs> I know that's not like a, a lot, but it's stressing me out. Everyone's looking at me like, that's super reasonable. Why are you? <laughs> who cares? Where is that? <laughs> But it's stressing me out, man. I don't, it's not even the amount that's stressing me out. I think it's just, it's the word thousand. I never thought that word would have a place in my life. A thousand, it's such a grand, it's like a king's word. A thousand, a thousand good men and a thousand horses. You're like, whoa, are there even that many horses? Whoa. I feel like I've seen like five horses in my life. And a couple of those were deer. Which I've since been told are not the same. I disagree. I think a deer is just a horse with the head of a mouse. <laughs> but I digress. My rent is a thousand, a king's thousand. I gotta write my checks in cursive. I had to relearn cursive to move into this place, to write 1,000 on my checks in perfect Elizabethan cursive. Never did get that Z, never learned that, that cursive five hump bushel of grapes, whatever that cursive Z was. Never got that down. Then I find out there's not even a Z in thousand. I was spelling thousand wrong this whole time too. <laughs> Fool I am. I live alone. I shouldn't live alone. 
I live alone. I'm gonna choke on something and die. Something that's like not food. I'm gonna choke on like a battery and die probably. I live alone by myself. Isn't that awful? I was telling my friend, I was like, dude, I'm stressing out, man. My rent's $1,000. I was like, I'm gonna have to move out. Like, how much is your place? He goes, dude, my place is 1300. I was like, what? I gotta move in there, dude. I gotta get back in the hundreds, dude. My rent is a thousand, a royal thousand. What is that word? Sometimes I'll, I'll be driving and my GPS will go, in 1,000 feet, turn left. I'm like, at that 1,000 feet? What are we going to the moon? <laughs> Jesus, I'm trying to go to the moon. I'm just trying to go to Dave and Buster's. It's right down the street. I'm not that patriotic, but, but this is something that bothers me. I hate when people say we didn't land on the moon. And I know I look like every person who's ever said we didn't land on the moon. <laughs> I look like I have a Tumblr page that's like, the moon landing was fake and my little pony is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but I hate when people say we didn't land on the moon. It's like, don't take away the only nonviolent American accomplishment there is, all right? <laughs> The moon is the only place that white people landed on, and there wasn't already thousands of people peacefully living there, all right? <laughs> <laughs> this is my conspiracy theory about the moon landing. This is the one thing that I think was fake. There was no way that off the top of his head, Neil Armstrong was able to come up with the beautifully poetic phrase, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, all right? That was written in advance, okay? That was more scripted than an Atlanta Housewives reunion, all right? Because <laughs> if you were the first person to ever land on the moon, you know what you'd say? I'm on the fucking moon! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Patricia. You said I'd never be anything. <laughs> Neil before Armstrong. We used to do cool stuff like that, man. And now, this country is falling apart faster than it takes main characters to travel around Westeros in the last season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's so terrible. <laughs> it's been awful, like, ever since Trump won, all my liberal friends are just crying and going, how could this happen? How could this happen? And I'm from Florida, so I know the answer. Uh, <laughs> Florida's the worst. <laughs> Florida only exists so that Texas can sleep at night. Uh, <laughs> at least I'm not you. <laughs> Florida's so awful, they won't even let you be sympathetic to it, even when you should. Like when those horrible nightclub murders happened in Orlando, everyone was like, oh, Florida, we're so sorry, Florida. And then the next day, an alligator ate a baby. And you're like, God damn it, Florida. Can you just stop being Florida for a second? And Florida woke from a drunk stupor and was like, what? I'm sorry. Pitbull is music. It's sad, man. I'm 39, so I'm like, I am going to miss my 30s. Your 30s is fun. Because your 30s is just your 20s with money. It's a real good time. Especially if you're single and dating. Oh, man, it's so much fun. Yeah. And I remember every phase of it, you know? I remember the early part of my 30s, I was newly single, and I was so excited. I was like, I wanna touch everything. <laughs> and then you get to that middle part, and you're like, I don't think anything's gonna touch me again. <laughs> and then you get to the later part, and you're like, I don't, I don't wanna touch anything anyway. <laughs> everything I touch is unemployed with a roommate. <laughs> My biggest problem is that, you know, I, I think I'm always looking for a man that's like my dad, you know, because my dad's my hero. He's, he's an amazing person, and he can do shit. Like, men now, they don't know how to do shit. Men used to be able to build things, you know, like pyramids. <laughs> yeah, y'all used to be able to fix things, like the economy. And my dad came and I could build anything. He could build tables and chairs. He built me an art desk when I was in eighth grade. He can build a great argument as to why the Civil War wasn't about slavery. Like, he can build anything. <laughs> you know what's up. 
but I can't marry my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm Southern, but, you know, like, that's like, uh, you know, it's, I know I can't marry my dad because he has a girlfriend, so he's taken. Good night. I love y'all. Thank you. You guys have been so great. Thank you so much. You guys have been so much fun. Good night. Thank you, guys. Good night. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah.